Mars has always had, among all the planets, I think a special fascination for, for humans. For a very long time, we've known enough about Mars to know that it is probably the most Earth-like. It may be the most like Earth, with an atmosphere and seasons. But we humans would perish quickly on Mars. Its air is thin, 1% of that at sea level on Earth. And it sits in a bad neighborhood of our solar system, near an asteroid belt. Its atmosphere is too flimsy to protect it. Asteroids continually bombard its surface. Violent winds can whip Mars's sandy soil into storms that consume the entire planet for weeks and spawn tornadoes eight kilometers high. Midday temperatures at the equator of zero degrees Celsius fall to minus 70 at night. David Greenspoon is a curator of astrobiology at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. As he sees it, Mars would be warmer if it weren't a planetary runt. When I grab coffee on a cold morning, I know that a small espresso is going to cool off quickly, whereas a larger coffee is going to stay warm much longer. Large objects stay warm longer because their interiors are shielded from the outside where the cooling occurs. And planets are exactly the same way. A small planet will cool off early in its history. A larger planet like Earth will stay warm for billions of years, which makes it a better place probably to look for life. Despite Mars's drawbacks, it has always fascinated scientists because its terrain seemed to give evidence that it might support life. Its dynamic landscape of mountains, volcanoes, and deep ravines is not unlike our Earth. To early astronomers, these features looked like oceans and rivers, and even a system of canals, supposedly not just supporting life, but actually produced by it. Personal Mole in the United States uh, observed these things and inferred that, in fact, these were things were so straight and so regular in geometry that they had to have been the product of intelligent life. Okay? Well, he was right. The problem was the life was at the wrong end of the telescope. In viewing this thing visually through a telescope eyepiece, the, the human eye brain combination started to connect things that weren't really there. Lowell was not alone. Some scientists were shocked when the probe Viking 1 beamed back this image. Is that a human face? Perhaps produced by Martians in their own likeness? 